You know, when you call your rusty in sports, you must be pretty good. And today we're going to look, take a look at one of the early superstars of the NHL when it first started. He was part of the first Stanley Cup champion in the NHL, and boys and boys could he play. A member of the Hockey Hall of Fame, 1963, Rusty Crawford. Now, Samuel Russell Crawford was a Canadian pro ice hockey forward who played for the Quebec Bulldogs of the NHA, the Ottawa Senators and Toronto Arenas of the NHL, and the Saskatoon Credit Crescents, Calgary Tigers, and Vancouver Maroons of the WCHL, or Western Hockey League. He was a two-time Stanley Cup champion, winning a trophy with the Bulldogs in 1913 and the Toronto Arenas in 1918. Crawford was one of the sports only stars and played in 258 games in three major leagues, scoring 110 counters. Adducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 63, born in Cardinal, Ontario, and played junior hockey in Vernon near Ottawa, winning the Shaver Cup with the squad in 1910. Following a stint playing amateur hockey in Verdun, Crawford moved to Saskatchewan, settling in Prince Albert. He played with the Prince Albert Mentos of the Saskatchewan Pro Hockey League in 1911, where he scored a grand total of 26 goals in seven games. Now, 5'11", 165, a big, big solid winger. He joined the Saskatoon Hoo-Hoo's, or Ho-Hos, for 1912. Both the Mentos and the Hoo-Hoo's, or Ho-Hos, issued challenges for the Stanley Cup in the year Crawford played with the team, but his squads were eliminated from the competition by other squads before facing the holders of their trophy. Now, returning east, he joined the Quebec Bulldogs, who were defending Stanley Cup champions uh, in 1912 and became the top scorer in the NHA during his time there. He won his first Stanley Cup in his first season, helping the Bulldogs develop their title <coughs> against a tough challenge from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Following the collapse of the NHA in 1917, the Bulldogs joined the newly formed NHL, but chose to not to operate his first two seasons. Crawford was claimed by the Senators in the dispersal draft, and he began the 1918 season with Ottawa, but was loaned to Toronto late in the season, and the centers were required to, to keep the roster within required limits after he signed Frank Neighbor to a contract. Completing the season in Toronto, Crawford and his new team, the Arenas, won the Stanley Cup, defeating the PCHL, uh, PS, excuse me, PCHA Vancouver Millionaires in a five-game series. The Arenas eventually signed Crawford a new contract Prior to the 1919 season, a deal that was protested by Ottawa, who uh, who claimed that he retained his uh, uh, his rights uh, under the NHL rules at the time. Now, NHL President Frank Calder was required to arbitrate a resolution and order the Toronto club to surrender one player of Ottawa's choice in exchange for Crawford. Following the season. Crawford returned to Saskatoon to play senior amateur hockey with the Saskatoon Crescents. Now, when he remained with Saskatoon while he turned into a pro team with the formation of the Western Canada Hockey League in 21, he was eventually traded to the Calgary Tigers in 22 for cash. By the time he joined the Tigers, he was already considered one of the game's all-time great players and was also regarded as one of the fastest skaters in Western Canada. He won the WCHL Championship in 24, scoring one of Calgary's goals, in a 2-0 victory over Regina Capitals to clinch the title. He appeared in the 24th Stanley Cup Final, where Calgary lost to the Habs. Now, after one more year in Calgary, Crawford was traded to Vancouver Maroons in exchange for her, Fern Hedley. After one year in Vancouver, he moved on to the Minneapolis Millers of the American Hockey Association for four seasons and was a member of the 1928 title team. Crawford announced his retirement in 1930 at the ripe old age of 45. He coached one season of senior hockey with Prince Albert of the Saskatchewan Senior Hockey League in 31 before leaving the sport for good and, of course, inducted in the Hockey Hall of Fame in 1963. Now, known for his rough play on on the ice, and he was rough, he was involved in several instances of uh, tough play throughout his career where he was reprimanded either by legal authorities or by league ruling. In 1910, while a member of Prince Albert Mintos, he assaulted Rajana Bro uh, of the Saskatoon Straconas in a game in Saskatoon on January 11th. Crawford was later found guilty of assault on January uh, 19th at Saskatoon City Police Court and fined $5 in costs. Now, during the 1919 season, uh, in a game, the game between the Senators and the Arenas, Crawford, representing Toronto, assaulted Jack Darrow of the Ottawa Club by striking with his stick over the neck 
and was giving a double major penalty, which is 10 minutes, by referee Harvey Pulford. Previously to attack on Dara, he had also slashed Frank Nyber during the first period, drawing a major on the plate. During the interval between the second and third, Sergeant Barlow of the Ottawa Police Department visited the Toronto dressing room and informed Coach Dick Carroll of the arenas that if he used Crawford in the upcoming period, he would be arrested for assaulting Dara. Later on January 27th, NHL President Frank Collier fined Crawford $25 for rough play based on referee Pulford's report. Now, during the 24 WCHL season, Crawford, who was playing for the Tigers, was suspended one game by the league by assault, for assaulting Gordon Keats of the hockey Edmonton Eskimos. Now, Crawford also ran the legal trouble in Vancouver in 26 when he pled guilty to a theft of 550 at a party. In a very, very iconic NHL moment, he admitted taking the money but intended to keep it only for safekeeping. He was eventually given a suspended sentence. Now, following retirement, he farmed in Spruce Home, Saskatchewan. He sold his farm in 1960 and moved to Prince Albert, where he remained until his passing in 1971. So, again, Montreal Montagnat in 1908, Newton, Newington, Ontario's in 1909, Prince Albert Mentos from uh, 10 uh, and 11, Saskatoon Hoo-Hoo's and the Saskatoon Wholesalers. In 1912, Quebec Bulldogs from 13 to uh, uh, 17, Senators and Arenas in 1918, uh, Arenas in 19, uh, Saskatoon Crescents 20 and 21, Saskatoon Moose Jaw Crescents in 22, Saskatoon, Saskatoon Sheiks and Calgary Tigers in 23, 24 to 25, the Tigers, Vancouver Maroons in 26, Minneapolis Millers 27 to 30, and Prince Albert uh, Mentos in 1931. Now, as it stands right now, NHA, 98 points in a 99 game, 66 goals, three goals in the playoffs. WCHL totals, 34 goals in 121 games, 55 points, two points in the playoffs. Two NHL uh, Stanley Cup titles, 10 goals in 38 games in the NHL, and two goals and one assist in the playoffs. And boys, what a money player. Now, I would like to know if anybody knows the, the history of the Saskatoon Hoos. I'm thinking this is based on a either a, a call from an animal or a drink. I'd like to know uh, the because I've been looking for some information on Saskatoon Hoos, uh, two different methods, and it's not there. But my God, Rusty Crawford, what a life in hockey. And he never scored more than 20 goals in a season, uh, more than once. Like he, uh, he had 26 with Prince Albert. And the four goals in the playoffs, but he was a typical, you know, ten to fifteen goal scorer wherever he went. So <coughs> at the time, <coughs> he was considered by many, like I said, not only a power forward, a dangerous power forward. Have puck will travel. So, ladies and gentlemen, we like what we're doing. We're a vintage Channel Show podcast. Where Toronto used to win the Stanley Cup back in the day. We uh, let us know how you like it. We'll like, comment, subscribe, or share. And don't forget, keeping your stick in the ice. Just like Rusty Crawford, you got to keep your stick in the ice because if you don't, you end up stealing money later on and getting those $5 fines. And maybe you can afford it, but hockey doesn't need that. Thanks.